to start the week here in Westfield. So thank you, Mayor Colleen Marr, not only for all you do in Fanwood, but in your partnership as a co-chair of the Raritan Valley Line Mayor's Alliance. Uh, we're also joined by our terrific Congressman, Tom Malinowski, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, as well as NJ Transit Board Chair. <laughs> By the way, homage, Dr. Homage. Uh, as well as NJ Transit Board Chair and Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane Gutierrez Schicchetti. Uh, Kevin Corbett is doing what he should be doing, uh, meeting with the feds right now, so he sends his best in absentia. Uh, Colleen also mentioned that uh, Westfield's Mayor Shelley Brindle couldn't be here today. Uh, we give her a shout out in absentia to all of the elected officials, legislators, mayors, freeholder. I said to these guys, I meant freeholder, but if you say mayor here, 25 people turn around, you say freeholder, <laughs> a half a dozen assemblymen, senator, etc. So to each and every one of you, uh, thank you for coming out today and thanks for having us. Um, looking at this group and where we are, you could probably get a sense of why we're here and Colleen has already done a very good job of laying it out. So let's start the week with some good and long-awaited news. One seat off-peak rides into New York Penn Station along the Raritan Valley Line will resume on Monday, November 4. <laughs> complete, uh, complete, uh, <laughs> complete fishing for applause on my part there, so. Just glad to see it worked. Uh, this restoration will cover all five midday daily round trips and three of the four scheduled evening round trip trains. And that last train, which is the last nightly train to New York, will be rescheduled to cut the wait time for the connecting ride at Newark Penn from 24 minutes to eight minutes. Uh, and that's something, by the way, with more predictability and more frequency, we'd like to do in the peak side of life as well. But that's that's gonna be a reality as of November 4th, off peak. Quite simply, this service restoration means the elimination of major headaches, and I don't have to tell you this, for thousands of train riders. It means that the staffing and equipment required for reliable and sustainable service have been secured. It means more time actually getting to where you need to go and less time waiting. I wanna thank uh, Congressman Tom Malinowski, uh, who has been, uh, I would say somewhere between a cheerleader and uh, and in our face uh, as he as he should be, uh, as well, yeah, as well as as well as the mayors all all throughout the Raritan Valley line and the other legislative leadership, the freeholders, uh, not just in this county but across the four that are impacted, for their work and partnership getting today to today. The congressman in particular was an instrumental voice throughout this process. And I also thank him for his continued advocacy for the federal investments that we need to get the Portal Bridge project greenlighted, as well as other, yeah, as well as other long overdue transit improvements. I also want to acknowledge there are a lot of legislators here who um, who did a lot of really good work on this. Roy and Linder are here, and there are two of them in particular I wanted to give a shout out to. So thank you. Ever since our administration took office, we've been working hard to put things right for all of NJ Transit's commuters after their lost decade. For eight years, we saw, they saw rather service decline. They bore the brunt of at one point a 90% cut in state support, the decimation of the ranks of engineers, and they had to cope with the failure of the previous administration to ensure implementation of positive train control to ensure their safety. And they did this while having fair hike after fair hike thrust into their shoulders. Make no mistake, Making up for this lost decade will not happen overnight. It will take step-by-step -step improvements. It will take continued commitment from our administration to get NJ Transit back on a strong financial footing so future investments can be secured and commutes can continually be improved. On Wednesday, for example, I will join Diane and the aforementioned Kevin Corbett and many others on the NJ Transit team to graduate a class of new engineer trainees and watch them move yeah. I feel like there's a, an applause sign above us here somewhere. And watch them move on to the final, but it isn't always this way, trust me. Uh, and watch them move on to the final stage of their training to receive their certification to operate on the rails. Today's announcement is a long time coming. 
too long, frankly, and I fully understand the inconvenience that commuters have faced since these rides were suspended uh, last September. Starting here and today, we're taking a major step to getting things right along the RVL and putting commuters first again. As more engineer training classes graduate, as new accountability standards and internal reforms at NJ Transit continue to take hold, and as long-awaited investments in new passenger cars and station improvements start to come online, riders here on the Raritan Valley Line and across the entire rail system will see real improvements in their commutes. This is the commitment we've made. It's a commitment we will keep. And I should say, in addition to all of the VIPs, dignitaries, elected officials here today, uh, we could not do this at NJ Transit or across the entirety of our government without great support and leadership from our brothers and sisters in organized labor. So, Ray, to you and your colleagues, God bless you and thank you for everything you all do. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce a strong voice for our residents, not just here in Westfield, but across central Jersey and in Washington. Please help me welcome Congressman Tom Malinowski. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I am so happy that we are here today to make this announcement. Uh, I'm so grateful to you, Governor, for, uh, for being here with us. Um, look, look, look at the people standing here. We're in Westfield. We have elected officials. We have community leaders from as far away as Hunterdon County. We have the mayor of Clinton, New Jersey. This, this line serves so many people, so many communities, so many families. It is so critical to our growing economy, so critical to our hopes for a growing economy in this part of New Jersey. And what the commuters go through every single day is, is just unacceptable, having to change, and not just to change trains in Newark, but go downstairs, upstairs, um, the, the, the anxiety, the hassle, the pain of that in the middle of what is already a difficult commute is, is really, really unfortunate. Um, I, I want to I tell you a little bit about a, a piece of history because I think it, it gives us a sense of perspective on how important this is. 111 years ago, you could get on a train, a steam train, not too far from this spot at 7.35 in the morning it would shoot you to the docks of Jersey City, where right there you get off that train, get right on a ferry, and be in New York City at 8.25. A 50-minute ride in 1909. And actually, it was more convenient, because the ferry's right there next to the train when you get off. That's where we were in 1909. The next year, because that was not good enough for the people of New Jersey in 1909, we built the Hudson River Tunnel, which was a marvel of engineering at that point. And now, with millions more people, tens of thousands more commuters, we're in a situation where we cannot sustain our economy and the demand for transit to New York with the infrastructure that we have. And that is why we're here today, because we haven't built a new tunnel and we have to keep on reallocating the resources, and it's never good enough for any of the lines that New Jersey Transit operates. That's why we're here, and we're here because of that lost decade. We're here because of the disastrously irresponsible decision by the previous administration to cancel the, the former tunnel project, the ARC tunnel project, which would have been built by now if it had not been canceled, which would have dealt with, among other things, the one-seat ride problem. And that is why I am doing everything I possibly can as the governor mentioned, to get that federal money and that federal commitment for that massive infrastructure project. And we are making progress on the portal bridge despite tremendous resistance from the Trump administration. And I believe we'll make progress on the tunnel as well. But meanwhile, we've got to do something for the commuters who are suffering now, who are struggling today. And that's why I'm so grateful to the governor for working with my office, for working with the Raritan Valley Line Mayors Alliance and the Raritan Valley Rail Coalition to restore the off-peak service that was taken away before. And to, to work on some of those issues regarding making the transfer process easier at the Newark station. Every little bit counts. So this is a significant step forward for all of us. 
and the first step to the most important measure that we need, which is to adding peak service for the 23,000 commuters who use the Raritan Valley line every single week. This, this is just a step forward. I am not going to stop fighting. I'm not going to stop being in your face, Governor, and a cheerleader um, until, <laughs> thank you, until, until those morning and evening rush hour commuters get the benefit of this service as well. And it is only fair because, frankly, we have more riders than a lot of other New Jersey transit lines mm -hmm. that have many trains going directly to New York today. So this is where we are. Eventually, we're going to have the Gateway Project, which is going to solve all of these problems. But let's take some steps now. Let's get some light ahead of the tunnel. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, and now I'd like to, I'd like to ask uh, Commissioner uh, Scassetti to come up um, with some final words. Thank you. Good morning. So as chair of New Jersey Transit, the first thing that I would like to offer is our appreciation and our thanks for the patience that our RVL commuters have had during the time that we have had to make changes to their schedules. Those were not easy decisions to make, um, although they were the right decisions given the status of positive train control. And as you know with that, our job is not done. Uh, we have much to do to finish our PTC implementation by December of 2020. But being able to work through those issues on the RVL line and then in conjunction with Amtrak to get their summer work done, we are happy to be here today to restore the service that you had on your off-peak trips. As I said, the job of PTC is not done. It is very important for us to not only deliver reliable trips, but safe trips. They go hand in hand. And we will continue to work very hard to make certain that we improve service with every task that we complete. We have heard so much from your RVL Rail Coalition team, uh, mostly headed by Bruce Bergen at our board meetings, I think on a monthly basis. Um, he's been a staunch advocate for all that you ask for from New Jersey Transit. And we will continue to make both more reliable and predictable the ability for you to have single platform transfers in the peak hour. That's a very difficult task, but it's not insurmountable. And so with our partners at Amtrak, we will continue the conversations that hopefully get us there sooner rather than later to make all of your commuters' trips both comfortable, reliable, and get you home in time for all those important events that you have and get you to work on time for all that important work that you do. Again, we appreciate all of your patience. New Jersey Transit is committed to returning the, to, the, to the state it was 20 years ago. I don't know if I can get back 111 years, Congressman. Um, but we're going to do our very best to give you the very best service that you deserve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. Tom, who's allowed me to trademark the light uh, before the tunnel, uh, ahead of the tunnel, and Diane for your comments. Um, I also, I just have to say this, this is a, not just a group of uh, elected officials, it's a bipartisan group of elected officials, and that means a lot. It, it, it goes to tell you that commuting is not partisan. All right, so getting this right is, is in all of our interests. I also mentioned our brothers and sisters in organized labor. How could I forget the newlywed Barry Kushner is with us as well. So Barry, great to have you.